right, so today we're going to be going in on this 535XI manual transmission. It's like unicorn, right? I rarely ever see these in manual. But it pretty much got some bad turbos, and we're going to replace these and pretty much upgrade this whole thing. So it's going to, this job is going to be a little bit uh, intense since I'm going to have to, the whole point is pretty much to put like a single turbo in here. So as you can see, these have to be relocated, all that gotta go. And down here, the AC line, I'm gonna have to reroute that. And this, the DSC module, I'm gonna have to like drop it down a little bit. And at some point in time, I have to get some, was it the M5 wires? And relocate this whole thing. But I think for now, I could just go ahead and unbuckle it and then just drop it down some. So it has some enough um, looseness on here to go ahead and bring it down. So the main thing I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just start tearing to this. Uh, I never really worked on one of these 535s before, especially an XI, I rarely ever work on these things. So it's pretty much gonna be a learning curve for me right now. So yeah, bear with me on this one. So I'm not gonna go ahead and do any like step by steps or anything like that because pretty much I'm gonna be figuring it out as I go. All right, so I'm gonna start to take off the bumper right now. So. Got this whole piece taken off right here and the side tabs are off. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect this piece, uh, pop this piece off right here and then just take this whole assembly off to the side. So that way I can access all the fans and all other stuff to take them out. All right, so I have the belly pan down. I already went ahead and drained out the coolant and the oil. So right now I took out the O2 sensors, actually loosened them up and disconnected the exhaust from the downpipes. So right now, I haven't dropped the, dropped the, so I haven't dropped the subframe. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can go ahead and just loosen it with this uh, ratchet. So go ahead, loosen those downpipes and see if I can drop them without having to drop the subframe. It looked like I could, but I'm just trying to test out and see if I could do it. But I think if it was the OEM downpipes, you definitely would have to go ahead and drop it the uh, subframe. So yeah, I'm gonna try and work at this. Cause you see this little piece right here that extends over the engine mount. It doesn't really give you any room to run a socket straight up. So if, it, if that wasn't there, or you could like knock this down some, you could go ahead and get more room to get to it. But I think I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this one down. It's gonna loosen and it's gonna give me enough space to run a socket straight up to get this one loose too. So I think I have to get this one out first before this one will slide out or something like that. I'll figure it out. So I have the front down pipe loosened and right now it gave me enough room to go and get the rear one. So I just have a, pretty much my socket here, you know, the extension and a, swivel, a wobble socket at the top with a 13. And yeah, I go ahead and just loosen it now. So loosen the front one first and then I'm able to loosen the rear now. And then they should both just drop out nice and easily right now. So yeah, so it looks like I don't have to drop the subframe, but once I get this loose, I can surely see if I can or not. All right, so I have all the O2 sensors out and that's imperative to even be able to pull them out because if the O2 sensors, you gotta like wiggle it and it's gonna get in the way catching on the axle. So pretty much remove those out. And then what I did was I pushed the exhaust up and have it this, uh, which one is this? The front, the front um, downpipe and pretty much could wiggle it out this way. So once this is out the way, then this one could just pull out easily. So these are the downpipes and they're all out. And yeah, didn't have to drop the subframes. So I'm pretty happy about that. So I know definitely, I don't think if I went ahead and got a, your OEM downpipes, I think, yeah, you'd have to go ahead and drop the subframe. So yeah, since the downpipes are out the way, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the outlet. And pretty much it's just running a socket all up to here to grab it with a swabble socket. So if you got a wobble head, it's like mostly everything that's hard to get to as long as you got a wobble head socket and some extensions you could get to it so i'm just gonna go ahead and take out the outlets now and then once i do that i could go ahead and get to the start taking off the rear turbo and then the front turbo and just drop it all out sometimes i take it off in one whole piece but i think i'm gonna go ahead and put it off in uh 
sections. So the rear, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull the front. So I'm gonna use the engine support and set it across here, and then pretty much support the motor, and then take off the the bolts for the mounts, the two at the side plus the one at the top, and then lift the motor up a little bit, and I should be able to have enough room to take off the bracket that's underneath the turbo. All right, so this is the two bolts I was talking about. So right here, I'm able to remove this out of the way. But this is the thing right here that's pretty much blocking the front turbo from coming down. I got it loose and the turbo pretty much gonna drop it out from the side right there. So I just gotta go down there and uh, pull it out. The turbos are out and I pretty much gotta do now is just take off those like straight pieces, like these hoses, the top one here and the bottom uh, holes over here. I just cut them in the middle, so that way it just like slide right out. I don't have to worry about trying to get up into that bolt up there. So it's way easier to take it off when the turbo's out of the way. And I'm not reusing these lines anyway, so go ahead and just uh, tore them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those off and go ahead and put back up the engine mount. Put the engine back on its mount area. And I already put the screw right here because right now it's kind of loose. So it's just to bolt it back up to the block and then I'll let it back down. So pretty much the whole side is out. Um, all the fittings, the oil, coolant. The only thing left is the last rear inlet. I gotta pretty much saw that off and pull it out. But right now I'm just gonna go ahead and take apart this uh, packaging and get the coolant, oil feed and all that other stuff mocked up and pretty much installed on the block so out the package these are the only ones i picked out and these are the ones that's going to go ahead and block off all the ports that needs to be blocked off so the good thing is these only fit in one spot so you can't really mess them up so two of them is pretty much going to be for the water holes um that silk this piece right here so there's two parts that right here we already took out the hoses for the coolant feed just gonna go ahead and use those two and block them up. So here I gotta take out the rear inlet, so I can't really pull it out. So I'm using one of these, a uh, little miniature saw, and gonna go ahead and like cut through here at this angle. So that way, when I pull up, it just pulls right up through the space that's there. Cause it's right here, this where it curves. That's what keeps it from getting pulled up. So I ain't planning to going back to twins anyway. And if anything, most likely get these upgraded. So. This don't really need it anymore. And this is the end piece. So now that piece is cut off, I should be able to see how to push it up. So it's free. So all I gotta do is just pull it up and it should be good to go. So make sure this piece right here is disconnected off the pipe. And this is it right here. So you might have to go ahead and like give it a quick yank up like this and it'll pretty much break off the tabs so there's no way of even going down and getting access to it so you just have to break them off and just pull up and yeah it'll come right out so as you can see those are the tabs right here there's two of them one here and one over there there we go so I'm gonna take the gasket off this water pipe. It is like completely flat right now. And yeah, it's best to replace this now before you bolt everything back. We use the old one and the whole thing just like start leaking coolant. So pretty much it's a cheap gasket um, to buy. It's not expensive or anything, even the OEM one. And yeah, it gives you a peace of mind. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that now. So this is the new one installed and you can see how it's like more pronounced up. So you clearly can see it's gonna seal better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this hanging for right now. Cause I wanna go ahead and tackle the mount. This mount, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off so I can take this off the car. And the whole point is I wanna take this piece off because it's pretty much the one thing that blocks up and um, don't give enough room when you have the mount and it just gets in the way of everything. So I'm just gonna remove, remove this and then bolt it up and pretty much have some clearance. And hopefully the downpipe and everything will flow easily without having to throw it into this or anything. This is it off right now. And yeah, I'm gonna use this and pretty much pry it off. And you can pretty much use any method that you choose to 
take it off if you choose to take this piece off. But yeah, I'm just pretty much testing it and see if I have a feeling I'm gonna need to take this off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off now. I thought I was gonna have a fight, but this thing actually came off easily. So I just went ahead, pried it, pried it, and then popped it right off. So go ahead and use a hammer and tap these pieces down just because. And yeah, I think it frees up a whole bunch of room right here.